the cell we will continue our discussion about functions of cell membrane and today we will discuss the role of cell membrane in communication all cells need to communicate to each other in order to coordinate their functions the communication is done by some cells emitting molecules as signals these molecules are made within signaling cells and are either expressed on their surfaces or are expelled into the environment by a process known as exocytosis. Other cells receive these signals and act accordingly. Most cells do two-way communication means they can send and receive signals. There are four different forms of signaling. For now we will only learn basic concepts rather than describing types. <coughs> Receiving of signals is made possible by the presence of receptor proteins on the surface of receiving cells which act like TV antennae. However, these antennae are made up of proteins and are hooked into phospholipid bilayer. While receptors are made up of proteins, signals are made up of a variety of molecules including proteins fatty acids and even gases like nitric oxide and carbon monoxide molecules. These signals do not have to enter the receiving cells but they rather activate a number of intracellular signaling proteins as a result of which a receiving cell changes its behavior or initiates a function. So the signal protein is moving towards the receptor protein at the cell brain. Depending upon the signal, a cell can change rate of energy production, which is known as metabolism. It can change its own shape or if a cell is mobile it can start moving in a particular direction again as directed by the signal. Signal can also go to nucleus and be responsible for altered gene expression. Outcome in any case will be altered cell behavior. Now uh, we will look at, at an example uh, and the purpose is to describe the importance of communication and explain the process. And we will do this by using uh, a defense mechanism which is used by a white blood cell which is known as a neutrophil to defense the body. In this slide you are seeing some bacteria within alveoli of lungs. Red circles are N formulated peptides which are a type of protein. Human cannot produce form N formulated peptides. It is produced by some bacteria and if infected by these bacteria, these proteins enter into the human bloodstream. As these proteins move through the blood, their concentration decreases. white blood cells called neutrophils are also found in blood and have receptor proteins on their surface uh, surfaces these receptor proteins receive these proteins as signals and because n formulated peptides are not naturally found in humans neutrophils take these signals as a foreign invaders receptors at the surface of the neutrophils can detect only one percent difference in the concentration and start moving towards the high concentration until they reach the highest concentration which is highest at the site of infection of course. This is the slide which is showing the direction of movement of white blood cells called neutrophil uh, towards the highest concentration of proteins uh, produced by bacteria. 
once they reach at the site of infection which in our example is alveoli of lung they leave blood vessels and start the process of engulfing and eating the bacteria the process of engulfing and killing the bacteria by white blood cells is known as phagocytosis in our initial slides we learned a word exocytosis in in which the cells actually get rid of some molecules from their cytoplasm endocytosis is exactly opposite of exocytosis in which cell takes molecules from the environment into its own cytoplasm phagocytosis is a type of endocytosis in which bacteria fungi and dead cells are engulfed and eaten by white blood cells like neutrophils and macrophages.